Hi folks, you are very welcome along here to the National Basketball Arena in Tala for the Under 19A Girls All-Ireland Schools League final. It is of course between Holy Faith Clonturf in red and Skull Creasery of Port Leash, County Leash in green. Holy Faith Clonturf, Clonturf even are of course Subway All-Ireland School Cup champions this year at this level. And it's going to be a battle and a half. I'm going to be on my own on commentary for at least the first quarter. So you're going to have to cut me a break on that. We're just waiting for someone else to arrive um, to cover the table. But after that, you'll be joined by the dulcet tones of Patrick O'Neill as Mabel Shea gets the first score for Holy Faith Clontarf. This, of course, a who's who of... DCU Mercy players and indeed Irish internationals on both sides. And uh, Pat Critchley, great to see him back here at the arena. Skull Creek Street, so successful over the years. As indeed have Holy Faith Clontarf been. This is, of course, the final schools game for a lot of these a lot of these girls doing their leaving cert this year. But uh, we have of course a good few danger women to look out for and that is one of them Brona Power Cassidy that one doesn't go for her though and we are back with Skull Crease 3 looking for options a lot of these Port Leash Panthers girls of course were hugely successful in the Hula Hoops National Cup under 18 and 20 runs they did super work and they're continually doing super work down in Port Leash. All their underage structures are fantastic and are reaping rewards, as we can see, across all the national competitions. So, as we said, it's set to be a cracking game. Two teams who match up quite well. Cray Street, of course, will be unlucky that they didn't get to the Subway Schools Cup final. So, they'll be looking to make up for it here, as it's Maeve O'Shea again with the score for Holy Faith. 6.22 to go here in the first quarter. And Power Cassidy with the steal. Up to Elizabeth Black. And a good score from Elizabeth Black. 6-0, Holy Faith lead. These are eight minute quarters. Just a reminder to you all in case you're wondering how we're at six minutes already. All the league finals are eight minute quarters. Chris Tree fires the ball cross court. Comes out to Kira Byrne, a very, very talented young player. One who I've loved watching, as I said, through the whole Hula Hoops National Cup for Port Leash Panthers. Paracasti inside, a lovely move. It doesn't go for her. She gets her own rebound, though. And the second one doesn't fall either. Chris Tree with the rebound. Trying to get through that tough defense of Holy Faith Clunturf. And just seemed to have taken a knock there. A big stand from Maeve O'Shea. Still 6 0 here. 5 14 to play in the first. This, of course, the second game of today's Schools League Finals. First game just over the under-16C with St. Mark's of Tala winning an absolute nail-biter against Castle Troy College of County Limerick. So you can pop back on YouTube and watch that later if you so wish because it was an absolutely cracking game between those two teams. Neve Kenny's shot doesn't go. She gets her own rebound, though. Black across to O'Shea. O'Shea now with six of their eight points. As we are headed for a timeout here with 4.53 to go.
Welcome back here to the National Basketball Lorena and Tala. 4.53 to play here in quarter one. I have been joined by Patrick O'Neill Lee. Patrick, I'm hearing myself echo in the headphones. That's why I keep repeating things. Um, what do you think of this game? Gonna, I know Holy Faith have got a good start here, but some talented players on the Skull Creek Street. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this year, a couple of those girls have made the breakthrough and to playing National League Division 1s with Port Leash Panthers. And I think if they don't let the occasion overawe them and stick with their game plan because their coach is fantastic. Pat Critchley has done a wonderful job with this school down through the years. Uh, then they have a chance, but they're up against a very talented Holy Faith squad. Yes, indeed. Maeve O'Shea with her eighth point of the game. Elizabeth Black, the only other player on the scoreboard for Holy Faith. And Skull Creek Street yet to get off the mark. Just as I say it, the shot goes up there. And again, Neve Kenny, we talked about her in the Subway Schools Cup final. What a tough defender she is. Probably one of my favorite defenders at this age group in the country. Yeah, she's very solid. And to be honest, I think a bit unlucky to get the foul called. I thought she did a good job there of keeping her body away and reaching with her outside hand to try and tip that ball away. 4.08 to go here in this opening quarter. Holy Faith looking to do the double. League and Cup. I think uh, Porlis just need one score pass just to get them settled. Yeah, and it'll definitely come. The problem is that Holy Faith zone defense here is very aggressive. They're oh. really doing a good job of getting tips and deflections. Yeah, nice move inside there. Iron Fitzpatrick getting inside. It just came off the bottom of the backboard though, so it didn't drop for her. And Holy Faith on offense again. Neve Kenny driving through, kicks it out to Black. Comes back inside to Kenny and it, she hits the deck but it's gone out for a Holy Faith ball. 3.31 to go. Four seconds on the shot clock here. So they'll be looking for a quick attempt. Power Cassidy gets the shot up and that falls short. Yeah, Brown has been a little bit short on a few of her shot attempts. She's working really hard to get position inside, and the Port Leash players are doing a good job of making her work hard. Brown, of course, had an absolutely cracking game for DCU Mercy Women's Super League on Saturday as they got the silver medal in the Women's Super League, but Brona absolutely lit up DCU on Saturday. It was unreal. Yeah, I watched that game. She was phenomenal. She did an awesome job of getting in front of Gronia Dwyer and finishing true contact. Kenny kicks it outside. Shot goes up from long. And it doesn't fall. 2.44 to go here in the first. Oh, nice play from Port Leash. And a good score. And that is them off the mark. A lovely vision to get that pass up the court. Yeah, it all started with a good defensive rebound from Jasmine Burke and then nice transition play by Port Leash. Maeve O'Shea battling. Gets it out to Neve Kenny. Pops it to Power Cassidy. Out to Black. Long. And Power Cassidy is there. First score for Power Cassidy today. Yeah, great positioning. I think actually Portley's just got away with a backcourt there. But great positioning by Brona and good finish on that off and board. Maybe O'Shea to Kenny. Out to Power Cassidy. Nice spin. Pops it out to Maeve O'Shea. Cross court to Black. Lovely ball inside to Long. Doesn't fall though. That was a lovely move though. Fantastic drive from Kira Byrne. It doesn't go for her though. And Holy Faith on the break. 
And Black draws the foul. 123 to go here in this first quarter. Black on the free throw line. First one's good. Second one rims out though. 121 to go. Port Leash could do with a score here now before the end of the first quarter. Shot goes up from Sean Adouli. Yeah, good job. Nice shot by Shauna. She was open on the elbow to take that. And then good job here by Kira Byrne and uh, tipping that ball, deflecting it out of bounds for Port Leash. Black slowing things down at the top of the key. Kenny driving, pops it out. Back to Kenny. She just managed to keep her hand on it. Oh, lovely score from Elizabeth Black. Another of DCU Mercy's underage stars. Comes from a long line of basketballers, Patrick as well. Yeah, a family who have been exceptionally talented when it comes to basketball and playing it in this country. Parents are coaching at Swords Thunder. You have to say all her and all her sisters are exceptional basketball players and have been playing up through the leagues. And indeed with Marcus with Cubs. Yes, absolutely. So really good, really high pedigree basketball family. 20 seconds. Long drives, falls short. Power Cassidy's there for the rebound. It doesn't go. And they have 12 seconds. A nice drive from Port Leash, and the rebound is good. Power Cassidy. And that is the end of the first quarter. Quarter two underway here in this under 19A All Ireland Schools League final. A great score there to open the quarter 
from Port Leash's Jay Burke. Excellent full court pressure by Port Leash with Shauna Dooley forcing that tip out of bounds and they re-secure possession. Kira Byrne on the point for Port Leash. Swings it out to Sarah Fleming. Ah, oh, lovely scores! And great defense from Port Leash again. Double team there on Bruno Paracasti and it's good success for them. A good block there by Maeve O'Shea. She's calling to the assistant coach there for a timeout. They didn't get one though. And here we go, timeout, 7.14 to go here in the second. Just 40 seconds gone here in quarter two and that timeout was called by Holy Faith Clontarf with a bit of momentum with Skull Crease 3 as they came back in after the end of quarter break. And a lovely backdoor play. Sees Neve Kenny settle, settle the team. 17-10 is the score. Yeah, great pass by Maeve O'Shea. She did a great job of seeing Neve Kenny cutting back door and found her. Fleming with the shot, it doesn't drop and <laughs> for Alicia Lerdo and Pat, I don't know if you remember the National Cup but I was always saying about Port Leash and their boards. It was massive for them then and it's looking like it's going to be the same now. Yeah, Shauna Dooley and Jasmine Burke are doing a good job inside for Port Leash working on the boards. And that one is gone out of bounds for a Port Leash ball. Jerome Westbrooks is in the building now for Holy Faith Clontarf as well. He'll be glad to see his side leading the way. Only by five though. 6.06 .06 to play here in the second. Black to Kenny. Outside to Power Cassidy. Comes off the front of the rim though. And it is Port Leash and Kira Byrne going up against Power Cassidy. Doesn't fall for her, and we're at pace now with Clontarf. Kenny slowing things down. Power Cassidy and one. She is so tough to stop on a one on one matchup when she gets that deep in the key. She's just got such a fantastic array of spin moves, and she finishes high and wide. and up high on the glass she's just if if, if Port Leash don't double down quickly sh they're going to get hurt a lot by Brona in that position Westbrook's making some changes giving his starters a bit of a rest we have Emma Crumlish checking into the game along with Anya Walsh and it's going to be just one shot for Power Cassidy and in it goes 5.39 to go here.
Her own Fitzpatrick out to Byrne. Fitzpatrick with the long shot. Byrne is there to collect the loose ball. Lovely bounce pass back to Fitzpatrick. Pops outside. Actually thought that went in for a second. <laughs> and for at least have it again. Shot goes up from Fleming. And back to five points we are. Black. Black still going. Kenny. Four seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, a bit of a rushed offense there for Holy Fate. They weren't quite sure what they were doing, and unfortunately, Neil Kenny throws the ball out of bounds. Foul call there against Holy Faith. And it looks like 24, Elizabeth Black. As Maeve O'Shea and Maria Long check back in. Yeah, Coach Westbrook's now just rotating his starters. Brona is the only one who's still in since the start of the game. Oh, super work by Sarah Fleming. She actually deserved that now after that work under the boards there. 4-11 to go here in the first. Still at a five-point game. Paracassi on the point for Clontarf. Out to Maeve O'Shea. O'Shea with the drive and the foul. Yeah, Maeve O'Shea has really added that ability on the three-point line to face up against the defenders shot fake put the ball on the floor and get to the rim and that was a great finish through contact and she drew the foul and the and one is good as well 357 to go here in the second quarter holy fate uh, in a one two two containment zone press after their free throws, their made free throws. And it's uh, just trying to slow Port Leash down a little bit, take some time off that shot clock, and then they're back into a 3 2 zone. Again, super boards from Port Leash. Yeah, Jasmine Burke had one fantastic game, I think, there in February for Port Leash Panthers. She was a top scorer for them. And she's done a really good job on the boards and finishing on those putbacks today so far. Brilliant score by Long, meanwhile, at the other end. Yeah, Maria's just back this year after a bad knee injury last year, but she's uh, playing some fantastic basketball. First foul there on Mavo Shape. Yeah, indeed, sending Shauna Dooley to the free throw line. Three ten to go here in the fir or in the second even. First one's good for Dooley. Two from two. Good job there, there. Good job, yeah. Yeah. Erone Fitzpatrick on defense, and we are headed for a timeout courtesy of Westbrooks. 3-0-3 to play here in the second.
3.03 to go here in the second quarter. And knocked out of bounds again for a holy fate ball. Too busy eating sweets here, Pat. <laughs> That's what's wrong with me. You're forgiven, Mary. <laughs> Good defense again from Port Leash. And a foul is called against Holy Fates. So it's going to be a Port Leash sideline. Yeah, that's Maeve O'Shea's second. She'll want to be careful now not to pick a third in this first half. Lovely score from Fitzpatrick. She's been doing a lot of work there and rewarded now with a good score. We're back to a four-point game, 2.35 to go. Power Cassidy. Uh -huh. Stylish. There's that, yeah, there's that spin move I was talking about earlier, Mary. You know, once she gets into that position where she's four or five feet away from the basket, she's very tough to stop. Foul called again there, 2.13 to go. This is, of course, as we said, game two of a four-game day. Next up is under-19 C boys St. Brendan's College, Bell Mullet of County Mayo against O'Carroll College of Nobber County Meath. And that's going to be followed by the last game of the day, the under-16 C girls final between Loretto College of County Cavan and Mount Mercy College in Cork. Dooley misses the first. Second one's in though. Two thirteen. Yeah. Two thirteen to go here in the second. Kenny. Press on from Port Leash. Maeve O'Shea. O'Shea spinning through. <laughs> What a score from Maeve O'Shea. Yeah, great job. We saw Holy Fate take some opportunity to get some subs in. And in comes Kim Clark for her first time on court. Good rebound there from Holy Fate. Looking inside and the aforementioned Clark catching the ball in the post. Good job by Jasmine Burke and tying the ball up. It's a jump ball. Arrows. Going for Clontarf. So baseline inbounds, 144 to go in the second quarter. Elizabeth Black tries to thread the needle. It doesn't work though. Fire is called instead against Port Leash. Yeah, she was just a, a split second slow on releasing that pass to Clark, who made a good cut. But then she did a really good job of getting back in court and forcing that foul. As we see Maeve O'Shea with the ball and taking the long ah. two-pointer. That is Maeve O'Shea's shot, Pat. She just loves that place there at the top of the key. She's another one down the corner for a long three, long two even. But she's having a fantastic game here. Yeah, she's been very solid both ends, but she's been really carrying the load offensively for Holy Faith in this first half. 115 to play here. Holy Faith lead by nine. Oh, fantastic score. Another, another player who's been making her mark on the scoreboard, Elizabeth Black. And the other end now, we have Fleming. Gone out for a Port Leash ball. Yeah, Port Leash have settled for a couple of three-point attempts the last few offenses. You would think they need to get it inside to that girl, Jasmine Burke, who's been very effective for them. 43 seconds to go here, and we have Holy Faith. A great, a great follow-up from Kenny. Yeah, Clark was unlucky there. She was trying to hit that contested layup, didn't make it. Kenny did a great job of being there first to get the rebound and put it in. Super help defense by Kenny there as well. Kier Byrne. 
Pops it outside. And it is Elizabeth Black. Eight seconds to go till half time here. Super defense from Port Leash. And great work from Kara Burton. Half time here at the arena. 35 22 in favor of Holy Faith.
Welcome back here to the National Basketball Arena in Tala. If you've just joined us, we are starting quarter three of the under 19A Girls All Ireland Schools League final. Holy Fake on Turf in red, leading 35 22 against Skull Creasery of Port Leash, County Leash, in green. Shauna Dooley unlucky there, under a lot of pressure, just couldn't get the ball to drop. And here we see Holy Faith and Maeve O'Shea splitting the defense and knocking down another two. M Maeve O'Shea's having a great game, Pat. Yeah, she's been phenomenal offensively, knocking down those mid-range two-pointers, but been very aggressive going to the basket for Holy Faith as well. And a good stop there from Brona Power Cassidy. And it's gone out in their favor, Holy Faith Clontarf ball. The press is still on from Skull Crease 3. Yeah, he switched it to a man press now. Trying to put that pressure up. Good job there by Kira Byrne, forcing Elizabeth Black to the sideline. And Yachana Dooley coming in from behind, trying to get the steal. Black, lovely ball inside to Kenny. Kicks it out to Long. Doesn't go, but Maeve O'Shea again. She's proven to be the difference here at the moment, Pat. Yeah, she's really on form offensively and playing really well defensively too. She's done a great job. O'Shea sneaks it into Power Cassidy. Her pass doesn't go to long though, and it's going for a jump ball. Possession to Clontarf. 6.36 to go here in the third. Power Cassidy tries her signature dish, but it doesn't go for this time. Fleming, meanwhile, at the other end. Great score. Yeah, it was good defense by Jasmine Burke on Power Cassidy that time. And immediately Port Leash into their transition game and nice two. Here we got Black turning down the screen, attacking the basket, drawing the foul. Foul was on Kira Byrne. She's going for two shots, is that? Amy Byrne checking in for Aaron Fitzpatrick for apologies. Portlaoise. Yeah, apologies there. I thought the foul was on Byrne, but they've called it on Fitzpatrick. So she's sitting down with three. Black misses the first. Second one's good, though. Contarf in that 1-2-2 two, two zone press. It's just containment. They just about get it over the line as well. And Power Cassidy steals it straight out of their hands. As O'Shea on the run. Cross court to Black. Lovely score from Elizabeth Black. Fantastic court vision there by O'Shea to see that Black was wide open for the 18-foot jumper and threw it cross-court, and Black knocks it down. Missed shot, meanwhile, at the other end for Port Leash. This is starting to creep away. You feel if Clantarf get a couple of more scores, this is going to be wide. Oh, oh. You have Kenny knocking down the three. Oh, I love watching Eve Kenny. She's brilliant. Yeah, we've jumped to a 21-point lead now with five minutes and eight seconds to go on this third. Foul called against Kenny. And I'd say we are headed for a timeout with Pat Critchley. It looks like it. 5.03 to go here in the third.
Welcome back here. We are midpoint of quarter three. Holy Fick and Tarf leading away 45-24 in this under 19A All Ireland Schools League final. Holy Faith, of course, reigning Subway Schools Cup champions with an emphatic win back in January. Doesn't seem that long ago, Pat, but it's actually nearly two months. Yeah, and you have to say, unless Port Leash can get on the scoreboard in the next minute or two, I think Holy Faith are going to come away with this one too. Power Cassidy. All this. Great ball movement by Holy Faith. You know, I think all five players touched the ball on that offense a couple of them multiple times. And nice finish. And while we have such an avid audience, Pat, we have to give a shout out to the Irish Women's Special Olympics basketball team who won a gold medal. A gold medal at the Special Olympics World Games yesterday over in Abu Dhabi. So massive congratulations to them and indeed to all of their coaches. If you didn't see the news, check out any of our social media channels. We got a couple of interviews with some of the coaching staff and some of the players. And what a welcome they're going to get in Dublin Airport on Friday. The entire Irish team when they arrive home with an absolutely massive medal haul. Yeah, it's been a phenomenal experience for them. I would know coach, head coach Gina Nocton from Galway. And, uh, you know, I'm so pleased for her that all the hard work that she has put in with this group of talented athletes has been rewarded. And you have to say, no more than they deserved, looking at some of the clips of the games, and I thought they were just fantastic. So, Yeah, definitely. Massive congratulations to everyone involved there. I know there's a lot of Midlands representation on it as well, so... Mavo O'Shea. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, this is all coming from Holy Faith's defense, and they have been phenomenal. They have really made everything contested for Port Leash. They've done a really good job of disrupting them. 3 one to go here in the third quarter as the foul is called there. Aron Fitzpatrick about to check back in for Port Leash. Aron, of course, sitting down for a bit. She was on three fouls. She still is on three fouls. <laughs> and Rebecca Redden joining her on court as well. And it's Dooley and Byrne that are taking the opportunity to get a bit of a breather. First free throw is good. I did hear her call bank. <laughs> You jinxed her. Second one doesn't go for Jasmine Burke. And we are back with Holy Fate. 2.56 to go here in the third. Power Cassidy pops it outside. Somehow, Clontarf keeps the ball. O'Shea with the long shot. And they just managed to keep a hold of it. O'Reilly, that is, for Port Leash. Elizabeth Black, Maeve O'Shea fires it up the court. Long had originally went to pass its power Cassidy and then took the shot herself when that lane was closed off by good Port Leash defence. Two twenty three to go here in the third. At 24 points, you feel if Port Leash don't get it down to at least the mid-teens before the end of this quarter, in the next two minutes and nine, they're really going to struggle in the fourth. And two subs coming in for Jerome Westbrook's team. We've got Anya Walsh and Emma Crumless checking back in.
end of an era for Jerome and this squad, Patrick. They've been so successful. And uh, so many of them in leaving search. Regardless of what happens today, that's been uh, quite a squad that Westbrooks has had over the last five years. Yeah, but would I be right in saying that he hasn't actually won this competition since, is it maybe three years? Yeah, 2015, 2017, yeah. yeah. Could be 2016 so. even, yeah. Hmm. But at under 16 level, before that, under 19 level, as you said, 2016, 17, and then two cups in three years. Yeah, done a phenomenal job. Lots of international talent here. Maeve O'Shea was on, and Brona Power Cassidy were on the under-18 team that competed in the A division last year with me in Italy. Neve Kenny has been on numerous under-16 squads and is on Tommy O'Mahony's current under-18 squad. Maria Long was under-17 development squad as well. So a lot of talent out here. Yeah, and similar can be said, of course, with, uh, I, always, I keep saying Klosh, Skull Cree Street, Pat Critchley. Has nearly been up in the arena more times than I've been at this stage in the last couple of years. Yeah, and again, he has some great talent with Shauna Dooley, Kira Byrne, both on international squads. Jasmine Burke and her own Fitzpatrick have both been very strong here today as well. Yeah, and Sarah Fleming as well. 101 to go in the third. Holy faith. Out to power, Casty. O'Shea. She just can't miss today. Yeah, I actually think she's only missed twice. One was a three point attempt, and the second was a contested putback. Port Leash with the long shot. O'Shea just. Uses her height to tip that one over their head. 18 seconds to go here till the end of quarter. Less than a second difference on the shot clock as well. So Holy Faith were working it around. And it's gone out for a skull crease three ball with 5.6 seconds to go in the third. Big long shot. Doesn't go. And we still have 0 0.4 seconds. And that is it. End of the third. Holy Faith 53. Kalash 3 25. Quarter four, just about to get underway here at the National Basketball Arena in Tallow. Holy Faith Clontarf leading the way, 53-25 against Skullcrease 3. Maeve O'Shea having a super game. 
I've half totted up that score sheet. It looks like she's on about 23 so far, Patrick. Yeah, no, she's had a phenomenal game offensively, as we just see her miss that long two. And she's going to pick up her third foul. Her free thought that there was a bit of contact on that reach. 7.40 to go here. Port Leash need a score. Good movement inside. Comes outside though to Fitzpatrick. Pops it across to O'Reilly. Outside to Kira Byrne. Shot needs to go up. And good defense from Holy Faith. Shot clock violation for Skull Cree Street. Yeah, it's been the one thing that's impressed me the most today in this game is, is their defense. They've really made everything contested and tough for Port Leash. And then down the other end, you know, they've executed with a lot of fluidity. Long shot. <laughs> Long shot from Kenny. Andy Gill, if you're watching, I told you she could shoot three pointers. 56 25, they lead. With 6.51 to go in the game. Oh, fabulous move from Fitzpatrick. It doesn't drop for her, though. And Holy Faith. Back on the attack again. Ball goes inside to Crumlish. Crumlish will be heading to the line. She's done a good job the last two offenses now. She's posted up deep in the key. Got the kick out earlier on and eventually the pass got to Neve Kenny for that three. And just there she turned, went to the basket and drew the foul. First one's good for Cromlish. Second one falls out though. Oh, Fitzpatrick unlucky there. She did good work on the rebound, but it just slipped out over the baseline. Yeah, credit to Black on making it a contested rebound, which forced Fitzpatrick into being a little bit off balance and knocking that ball out of bounds. Black inside to Maeve O'Shea and she is fouled by O'Reilly and she will also be heading to the free throw line. 6.23 to go here in the fourth. As we said, two more games coming up after this and they're going to be live here on YouTube as well. Next up is the under 19 C boys final. St. Brendan's of Belmullish against O'Carlin College from County Meath. We'll be going up against each other in that next game due to tip at about 2.30. Ah, fabulous score from Port Leash. Six oh seven to go here as Kenny is called for a travel. Pat Critchley subbing back in Sarah Fleming and Jasmine Burke. Yeah, that was a lovely deep two from O'Reilly for Port Leash. She takes a breather. If Port Leash have any chance of getting back into this, they're going to need to start racking up scores in a hurry. Kira Byrne comes off the screen. Fabulous! Byrne, what a score! And a vital one at that. Brings them up to the 30 point mark. Yeah, Kira Byrne is the one player you feel for Port Leash who can light it up from the three point line. She's a very big offensive threat. She's had a great season with the Division 1 team under coach Peter Dyden. Maeve O'Shea picking up her fourth foul there. Mm. And 
She is going to be subbed off for Kim Clark. 5.35 to go in the fourth. Yeah. It's not going to be enough for Port Leash just to start hitting some baskets. They're going to have to get stops at the other end. Can't afford to let oh. Holy Faith Brilliant get going. score. Another big three. From Sarah Fleming. Yeah, great job. That's her second or third three, I think, in the game. Yeah, she's a lovely shooter. Black. Speaking of nice shooters. At the other end, a oh, lovely bounce pass. She's so smart with the ball, Elizabeth Black, isn't she? Just Yeah, and very comfortable on her right hand or left hand, you know. So really key attribute for guards to be able to be comfortable on the dribble with both hands. Here she comes again. Pass along. Doesn't fall and Kira Byrne comes out. And Kenny with the steal. Power Casti. Got a little bit scrappy here, you've got to say. 4.23 yeah. to go. And that'll suit Clontarf because while Port Leash aren't making baskets, and neither are Clontarf at the moment, they're relying on that big lead. First foul on Kim Clark. 4.18 to play in the fourth. As long ball inside. And a great run through from Fitzpatrick. Very unlucky. She's, she's done some great cuts. She's done some great cuts and has worked hard on offense today. But has just been unlucky. Yeah, she's found the lane. She just needs to maybe work on having a slightly softer finish. Something you see a lot at, in ladies basketball. Players go at speed and put the ball up hard. Offensive foul called on Brona Power Cassidy. I think you can say you see it in men's basketball as well though, Pash. <laughs> Yeah, no, for sure. I know it's definitely one of the things that I would uh, focus on when I'm coaching. And we are headed for a timeout here with 3.50 to play. Three fifty to play here in quarter four in this under nineteen A All Ireland Schools League final. Holy Faith Clontarf look like they are on the road to a double this year, having won the Subway Schools Cup back in January. And look to be comfortable enough here with three forty to go in the league final. Super defense again from Holy Faith. Police just had nowhere to go with that ball. Travel it from Neve, yeah, travel from Neve Kenny. I nearly called it before the ref. 318 is what's on the clock. As Kira Byrne comes on the attack once more. Inside to Burke, who's been fantastic today. 
for Cree Street. Yeah, she's done a great job of finishing in the key, you know. I hadn't seen her prior to playing against her in National League this year, but she's, uh, she's really done an excellent job for Port Leash. Been one of their shining lights in this particular game. Port Leash, of course, in action this Saturday evening. For any of you Panthers fans who are watching, they've got a double header of games, men's and a women's game. Actually, women's and a men's game, I should say. The women's game comes first. The League Cup quarter final against St. Mary's Castle Island. And that is going to be followed by their men's Division One team league. League Cup game. Both teams in action. Brought a power pass it, he picked up the foul there and made her first free throw as Holy Faith have gone to the bench and have substituted the starting five. Coach Westbrook's recognizing that this game is away and giving some of the younger girls an opportunity to play. Good job, Portlaoise there working the ball around, and Fitzpatrick getting the two. Sorry, Pat, I was off checking fixtures there. Looks like that <laughs> Portlaoise men's game isn't confirmed. You were right. They are playing Cubs though, I believe, at some stage. They are. I'm not sure. Is it Saturday night after the women's game or on Sunday afternoon? Either way, they're both in St Mary's Hall, Portlaoise. So. Get down and support them. DCU Mercy, meanwhile, for all you Holy Faith supporters, DCU Mercy are not in action this weekend, having a qualified in second place in the Women's Super League this year. It sees them getting a bye through the quarterfinals into the semi-finals of the Champions Trophy for the Women's Super League. So they will be waiting to see the results of the other quarterfinals this weekend to find out who they will be meeting the following weekend. Yeah, it was a good performance for them against Father Matthews. Oh, super, yeah. Did a really good job, and it was great to see Bona Power Cassidy showcase her offensive skills. This game now with 1.34 to go. Just under a 30-point lead as Shauna Dooley gets the steal. Neve Heatherton kind of bumping, bumping Port Leash over the sideline. So it's gone out for a Port Leash ball. It's actually gone for two shots. Yeah, both teams on team fouls now. As we see Dooley at the line for the first of her two. First one rims out. 120 to go here. Second one's good. 65 plays 40. As poor Leash keep that dogged pressure up. Crumlish at the top of the key for Holy Faith. Pops it outside to Walsh. And Heatherton forces the jump ball, but it's going to be a Port Leash ball. 57.8 seconds to play. Yeah, you have to say hard luck to Skull Crease Three. They've come up against a Holy Faith team that have been really on form. Particularly defensively is where they've impressed me the most today. It made everything so difficult for Port Leash to score. Yeah. 
Their defense has been outstanding. 41.2 seconds to go here. And a lovely move inside by Burke. Doesn't drop. Now 24 second shot clock violation. And we're into the final 25 seconds. Five second differential on the shot clock. And Holy Faith are 18 seconds away from being crowned champions for the second time this year. And it's going to be free throws here, I'm guessing, for Fitzpatrick. 4.2 seconds to go. Yeah, congratulations to Holy Faith and Coach Westbrooks. They've done a phenomenal job here today. It's not often you get the double at this level because there are some quality teams out there. Uh, sure. And Clontarf, Holy Faith have done it. Full time here at the arena, 65 41. A massive double for the Dubliners. And Rory Wall and Louise O'Loughlin of Basketball Ireland making the presentation. And here come poor Leach. You've got to give it to them. They fought right into, up until the very end. And have a, a talented young team. Yeah, that second half performance from Holy Faith was phenomenal. They did a really good job of stopping Port Leash from doing what they wanted to. They took them out of their transition game and made every shot contested. And on the other end then, Holy Faith were, did a really good job of sharing the ball and Maeve O'Shea had a phenomenal game offensively. She really had her shooting touch on today. Yeah, indeed, a lot of good performances across the team for Holy Faith. Elizabeth Black with some vital scores as well. Neve Kenny with two big three-pointers and some great defense. And just a general all-round superb team performance on defense. I'm laughing because Louise is about the same height as me and I had to present medals to DCU Mercy the other day. Poor old Rachel Housens had to duck right down. <laughs> and Jerome Westbrooks picking up another medal. And we're going to get the presentation for the most valuable player. And it is Maeve O'Shea, who has got the MVP award, deservedly so. What a game she had. And as they are about to present the cup, we will bid you farewell. From myself and Patrick O'Neill. And that is over and out from the under-19A final. Congratulations to Holy Faith Clinton.